<laughs> Got any milk? Not anymore. <laughs> Everything is going just as I planned. Soon the entire world will be without dairy milk. <laughs> no butter on toast. No ice cream, no cheddar cheese, and nothing but dry cereal. Nothing can stop me now. <laughs> Somewhere over the Mediterranean Sea. Would you like our Italian entree, sir? No, thanks. It gives me hives. Our vegetarian dinner, then? No, gives me the vapors. Then, may I recommend the Greek plate? It's delicious. All right, if you insist. Enjoy. It's good to see you, Agent Fox. Ah, Monkey Penny. Now this is a real TV dinner. Right. Yesterday, our spy operatives discovered the factories and offices of Amalgamated Mew Juice Incorporated abandoned and drained of milk. Soon, the entire world's remaining milk reserves will be depleted. The idea of eating dry breakfast cereal is pretty hard to swallow. Yes, it is. Here's the only clue we have. Feta cheese, a low grade too. Spy operatives took that picture in the office of Mr. Howard Hugh Heffer Udley III. President and CEO of Amalgamated Moo Juice Incorporated. Exactly. We presume he has valuable information on the dairy crisis. The only available picture of him is hidden in your mashed potatoes. Finding Udley is your top priority. He shouldn't be hard to spot. The feta cheese samples found in Udley's office have been traced back to the island of Acidophilus. Your plane will be flying over the island any minute now. I've already set up the mobile command center where you will rendezvous with me and later on with Quack. The entrance code is in your fortune cookie. Any questions? No, I'm on my way. Good. Monkey Penny out. I wish I hadn't left my parachute in my other tuxedo. Maybe one of my special spy gadgets will help me. I wonder which one I should pick. What good is this without helium? This isn't such a safe bet. Hmm. If you thought that was impressive, you should have seen the one that got away. Hmm, so this is the sleepy little Greek island of Acidophilus. I seem to have arrived unfashionably early, as nothing seems to be open. I should meet up with Monkey Penny at the mobile command center. Five 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 zero nine four five. How fortunate that Monkey Penny gave me this entrance code. Hello, Spy Corps Mobile Command Center. Penny, I've got your number. Now that's a person-to-person -person phone call. Glad you could drop in, Spy Fox. Hello, Monkey. That's Monkey Penny. So, what do you think of Spy Corps' new Greek Island Mobile Command Center? Impressive. Disguising it as a half-buried boat in the middle of the town square was a stroke of genius. Nobody would ever notice that. That was Professor Quack's idea. Where is Quack? Oh. He'll be here soon to refill the spy gadget dispensing machine. In the meantime, he sent a couple of things ahead for your mission. Good.
because a spy without a gadget is like a shopping trolley without a broken wheel. How apt. Now, pay attention. This is Greek money. It's called drachmas. You may need to buy a few things around here on the island. And this is a... A toothbrush. And I could certainly do with one after that airplane meal. Don't put that in your mouth. It's not a normal toothbrush. It's a special laser toothbrush. Let me show you how it works. You hold the laser toothbrush, apply the minty fresh laser gel, push the button, then you can use it to cut through really thick steel. Hmm, I suppose that's one way to fight cavities. So, do we have any idea where Mr. Udderly is being held? No solid evidence yet, but you might want to check out that feta factory down by the docks. Feta factory, hey? I thought I smelled something suspicious. My spy watch is beeping. Spy Fox to Mobile Command Center. Please, stand by. Spy Fox here. Hello, Spy Fox. Remember, you can call me via your spy watch anytime for help and information. Just press the Mobile Command button. Will do. Spy Fox out. Oh, normally I would karate chop my way right through a door, but this one seems to be made of solid steel. The laser toothbrush makes impenetrable steel doors penetrable. Now that's a big side of beef. No buts about it. That's Mr. Udderly all right. And he's dangling over a pool of piranha. Now the question is, how am I going to get his rump roast down from there? Hmm. This must be the temperature control for this pool of piranhas. It's a very odd fixture for a feta cheese factory. The piranha pool seems to be getting colder. The little beasties seem to be slowing down. Hmm, fish on ice. That should hold them. Now for Mr. Udderly. You saved me! Thank you, Mr... Fox. Spy Fox. Routine rescue, really. Now I need to get you to our mobile command center for a debriefing. Good! I need to change my trousers! You've got to stop him, Mr. Fox! All right. Just calm down, Mr. Udderly. Why don't you start from the beginning and tell us what happened? It all started as a typical day at the office. When you're as important as I am, you're constantly fielding international cattle calls, reviewing grazing reports. Yes, you have to stay pretty sharp in the dairy business. So, 
When William the Kid's thugs made their appearance, I immediately snapped into action. There were dozens of them. I fought them. Hoof and nail. Pow, 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 pow. My whole body is a weapon. Then, suddenly, I smelled something revolting. It could only be one thing. Feta cheese. The stink was so overwhelming that I nearly passed out. Taking advantage of my momentary asphyxiation, kidnappers jumped me, then forced me into a smelly dark bag. They whisked me away to Kid's secret island fortress. It was just so humiliating being bagged up like a side of beef. But were you able to learn anything about what William the Kid is up to? Well, thanks to a little bovine ingenuity on my part, I was able to pick a few things up. Kid's demented scheme for gaining worldwide domination is run by a front company called Nectar of the Goats Corporation. He has a five-part master plan. First, capture all the dairy cows in the world. As you know, he's already done that. Second, he built a milky weapon of destruction inside his secret fortress. Third, use the milky weapon of destruction to flood the capital with none too fresh dairy milk. Fourth, frame all the poor dairy cows for his heinous crime. Fifth, Take over the entire dairy world! Spy Fox, someone needs to find that secret fortress and disarm that milky weapon of destruction. Hmm, sounds challenging. I need to find that secret fortress and disarm that milky weapon of destruction. Oh, I almost forgot. When William the Kid's back was turned, I swiped the secret code that turns the milky weapon of destruction off. Good going. Where is it? Uh, well, I had to swallow the code before I could read it so it wouldn't be discovered. Can you believe it? I find the whole thing a little hard to swallow. We need to figure out a way to get a look at that code. Someone needs to find that secret fortress and stop William the Kid. Good morning, Spy Fox. I took the liberty of loading the dispensing machine with some of my ingenious new spy gadgets. You should take a look at some of them, Spy Fox. They may come in handy. X-ray gum. How does this work, Professor Quack? Ah, that's my new and improved beef-flavoured X-ray gum. I'll explain how it works. You take a stick out, put it up against something beefy, move it around, and then you can see the yucky stuff inside. The best part of all is, when you're done, you can chew the gum. It actually has a very refreshing beefy flavour. You know, four out of five dentists prefer x-ray gum for their patients who need x-rays. A duck needs his fibre. That's the x-ray gum. Now, if you don't mind, Mr. Udderly, I'm going to need to use this x-ray gum to take a look at those four stomachs of yours. This isn't going to hurt, is it? Because I get sort of dizzy when I think about pain. In fact, just saying the word pain makes me want to... Professor Quack, your x-ray gum works perfectly. His ticker looks like it needs winding. It looks like he's got a spanner in the works. It looks like he's got a spanner in the works. I 
found the note. All right, now I need to find out where this punch card is. Then use it to disarm the milky weapon of destruction. What's in this egg-shaped container, Professor Quack? This is a little gadget I call the Spy Putty. What you do is open the cute little egg container and spread the putty on whatever you want to make a copy of. Press down and then peel the putty off. You have a perfect copy. Hmm, that looks rather silly. I know what you're thinking. You think that the spy putty looks a lot like that silly stuff they sell in toy stores. What you don't know is that I thought of it first. <laughs> oh, those duplicitous duplicators stole my idea. That's the spy putty. It appears to be a shoe. What is this gadget, Professor Quack? That's the night vision shoe. Oh, one of my most ingenious inventions. <laughs> if you happen to find yourself in a dark place, all you do is strap this shoe onto your head, and then you can see in the dark. How illuminating. <laughs> yes, and it has excellent arch support. That's the night vision shoe. Mmm, it looks like a delicious snack. May I eat this, Professor Quack? Okay, that's the cheese and safe cracker kit. It will help you get into almost any safe in the world. I won't explain exactly how it works because it's very scientific and complicated. Trust me when I say it works like a charm. And it tastes great in soup. <laughs> yeah, and this paper isn't half bad. Is this coin really a spy gadget, Professor Quack? Ah, that's the spy trap. <laughs> Let me explain how it works. It looks like an ordinary coin, like you might find in the street. But if you need to track three or more bad guys, the coin explodes and a net shoots out. It traps the naughty spy enemies. Nice, huh? Heads I win, tails they lose. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna lose my appetite if I keep this up. What handsome cufflinks. Are they a gadget as well, Professor Quack? Those are the suction cufflinks. I am very proud of them. They are tiny suction cups that allow you to climb across non-porous metal surfaces. The perfect fashion accessory for the well-dressed spy. Hmm, <laughs> that was a tasty one. Those are the suction cufflinks. The door's locked. It says trinkets. Welcome to the Trinket Emporium. My name is Gilbert. How may I be of service to you? Oh, honorable visitor to this our dear island home. I'm not sure yet. I was just noticing your fine selection of trinkets. Sir, I think that you will find we offer much more than mere trinkets. We pride ourselves in having the island's finest selection of rare and hard-to-find collector items and antiquities. Excellent. 
One never knows when one will be struck with an unquenchable desire to indulge in a blatant act of bourgeois consumerism. Our thoughts exactly, sir. So what's a jar of trinkets going for these days? Normally, sir, they're 20 drachmas. But for you, how about 50? Sounds good to me. I'll take it. There you go, sir. Why, thank you. Pardon, monsieur, but just where do you think you are going? On board. <laughs> monsieur is obviously making a little joke. No one, but no one is allowed on board the SS Deadweight without a gold-edged, wax-sealed, expensively embossed, handwritten invitation. And do you have one of these, monsieur? Not as such. Then I'm afraid, monsieur, that you should make like a plane in the Bermuda Triangle and get lost. I can gather information about the deck party with this. So, Captain, do you think you could take me out for a little boat ride? I'd love to, but there's just one problem. I can't go anywhere without my lucky charm. Your lucky charm? Aye, matey. Because that there is the sea, the final frontier. And on my voyages in the SS Winner Prize, on a 25-year mission to seek out new sea life and new civilizations, I boldly went where no raccoon has gone before. But, without my lucky charm, it would be way too risky. I can't chance it. I can gather information about Captain Drydock and his lucky charm with this. What do you know about Captain Drydock and his missing lucky charm? Please, can't you see I have official business to attend to? This is the sort of riff-raff behavior I associate with that wretched cantina in town. The cantina, eh? I'll keep that in mind. Hello, sweetheart. Welcome to the cantina. I'm Bear Bear. If there's anything you want, sugar, like, for example, sugar. You just let me know, all right? Thanks, Bear. What do you know about Captain Drydock and his lucky charm? Oh, that was a night to remember. Elaborate, please. Captain Drydock dared to play goldfish with Mr. Big Pig. It's ugly when egos are crushed over a game of goldfish. Captain Drydock hasn't shown his face in here since. I see. Drydock lost the charm in a game of go fish. What's with the weasel over by the SS Deadweight? He won't let me go to the deck party. Oh, darling. You won't get in the door without an exclusive invitation. Funny, though, the rabbit out at the souvenir stand always gets invited to those posh parties. Oh, really? I'll remember that. Here's one that goes out to all you white tux-wearing spies. It says, Entertainment, the tango. Darling, after 60 straight days of tangos, it's no longer entertainment. What's the trophy for? That's my cockadoodle foo trophy. I took lessons from Master Hong Kong Doodle, at least, until I punched his stuffing out. What do you know about Captain Drydock and his missing lucky charm? Ha 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 ha. 
The poor sap lost it in a particularly tense game of go fish. Oh, really? So this is the lucky charm, then? Yes, and I won't give it up easily. And you know that go fish is my game. Greetings. Interested in a little game of go fish, Mr... Um... Fox. Spy Fox. I've been known to play go fish from time to time. And you are? Artemis J. Big Pig. Pleased to make your acquaintance, sir. What do you say we make this game a little more interesting? Would you care to play for some trinkets? I just happen to have a whole jar of trinkets. Excellent, then. I like a fox who is willing to play for trinkets with a pig who likes to play go fish for trinkets. Place your trinkets on the table and we'll get started. Why don't we really raise the stakes on this game and play for Captain Drydock's lucky charm? Very well, sir, if you insist. Got any sixes? Go fish, Mr. Fox. Got any twos? Got any aces? Nice try, but you need to go fish. Got any sevens? Not a one, sir. Go fish! Got any nines? Nice try, but you need to go fish. Got any aces? Got any queens? What a fun game this is. Got any fives? Go fish, Mr. Fox. Got any jacks? Go fish. Got any threes? Ha! Go fish! Got any sevens? Got any tens? Nice try, but you need to go fish. Got any twos? Got any eights? Got any aces? Not a one, sir. Go fish! Got any fives? Got any fours? No. Go fish. Got any sixes? No, sir. Go fish! I've always been lucky when it comes to go fish. Got any threes? Got any jacks? Nice try, but you need to go fish. Got any queens? Go fish, sir. Got any threes? Go fish. Got any sevens? I'll just take those off your hands. Got any sixes? No, sir. Go fish. That's one set of cards taken care of. Got any sevens? Go fish, sir. Got any queens? Got any fours? No. Go fish. Got any fives? Got any twos? Go fish, Mr. Fox. Got any queens? Nice try, but you need to go fish. Got any jacks? 
Got any eights? Got any fives? Ha! Go fish! This suits me just fine. Got any tens? Go fish. Got any twos? Not a one, sir. Go fish! I love this game. Got any kings? Go fish. Got any fives? Ha! Go fish! Got any twos? Ah, oh, how delightful. That gives me a suit, sir. Got any kings? Nice try, but you need to go fish. And that makes a set, sir. Got any nines? A card, thank you so much. Got any sevens? Not a one, sir. Go fish! Got any threes? I thought you said you were good at this game. Go fish! Got any fours? Got any fives? Go fish, Mr. Fox. This suits me just fine. Got any tens? No. Go fish. Got any nines? Go fish, sir. I've always been lucky when it comes to go fish. Got any fours? No, sir. Go fish. That's one set of cards taken care of. Got any kings? Nice try, but you need to go fish. Got any fours? A card. Thank you so much. Got any nines? Not a one, sir. Go fish! Got any tens? Nice try, but you need to go fish. Ah, oh, how delightful. Got any kings? Go fish. I must apologize, sir. I am rather good at this game. Got any threes? I'll just take those off your hands. I've always been lucky when it comes to go fish. Got any fours? Ha! Go fish! That's one set of cards taken care of. Got any kings? Nice try, but you need to go fish. Got any fours? I've always been lucky when it comes to go fish. I win! All right. So, you won the captain's lucky charm back. Ask yourself, sir, if the charm is your turn, Mr. Fox. Because I'm a superior go-fish player. That's why. Ha 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 ha. Golly, I like you, sir. Whenever you want to play go-fish again with a go-fish playing pig, I'm ready and waiting. Hmm, Mexican jumping peanuts. <laughs> I noticed that there was a party going on down at that big ship at the docks. But I understand you can only go if you were invited. That's true. In fact, I am going as soon as I get off work. Oh? So you got an invitation? I certainly did. It's really fancy wancy one too. Would you like to look at it? Why yes, I would love to look at it. I'm so impressed that you got an invitation to this fancy deck party. Will you be wearing your tuxedo? No, I have chosen one of my finest all-cotton t-shirts to wear. 
One that will show off my impressive pectoral muscles. I'm sure. Would you consider selling me your invitation? Of course not. This was sent to me and me alone. I can't bear to pass up a deal like this. I'll take the teddy bear. Let me just get that for you. Ah! Oh! Ah! 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 Oh, forget it. You're doing this to me on purpose, aren't you? Not you again. How many times do I have to tell you? This is a private party, and without an invitation, you are not allowed to go on board. Oh la la! The nerve of some people! You think they would... Let me see that. Sign, Russian Blue. Monsieur, we are... Ever so honoured to have you on board with us today. Please, feel free to come and go as you wish. Why, thank you. How gracious of you. What a weasel. I trust Monsieur will have an enjoyable visit. And if there is any way that I can lick some more of Monsieur's boots, I trust he will let me know. <laughs> but of course. So this is the deck party. Before I join the festivities, I should let Monkey Penny know I'm here. Spy Fox to Mobile Command Center. Please, stand by. Hi, Spy Fox. How's the mission progressing? I just made it onto the SS Deadweight. I'm going to take a look around. Good. Keep your eyes peeled for clues as to where William the Kid's secret fortress is. If Kid's fortress is so secret, how come we know about it? We're spies, Spy Fox. It's our job to know. And we are good at our jobs. Spy Fox out. Do conductors have a favorite vegetable? Well, I've always liked a good beet. Hello. You must be... Russian Blue. Noted socialite and attractive owner of the SS Deadweight. The name is Fox. Spy Fox. What sort of business are you in, may I ask? Oh, you know the Fox, you. As if I'd reveal my business secrets to you. Secrets, eh? You're very elusive, Miss Blue. Of course I'm elusive. I'm a shrewd business feline. Let's just say my business is international trade. Okay, but you've stirred my curiosity. What sort of cargo does the SS Deadweight carry? That's for me to know, Mr. Fox. As you can see, the SS Deadweight is a luxury liner. Let me luxuriate in peace. I understand. I can gather information about Russian Blue with this. Tell me about Russian Blue, Maestro. She throws a party like none other. But it's strange when she rushes everyone off the ship so quickly. What do you mean? I never ask questions. I have a feeling she takes the SS Deadweight out to sea during the night. I see. Thank you, sir. Hey, that's confidential. You're not supposed to be looking at that. Oh, of course. I'm sorry. I would never dream of doing anything like spying. I do wish my shift would end so I could get out of here. 
I should never have drunk those 17 bottles of prune pop. I can gather information about the Sailor Watchman on the SS Deadweight with this. Pardon me, I'm looking for the toilets. This is the bridge. The head's down below, actually. I need to go pretty bad too. But of course, I'm not allowed to leave my post. The shift's over at two frog ribbits and a cork pop. Then my replacement shows up. Oh, well hang on tight. I'm sure your relief will come soon, one way or another. What's with that chap on the bridge? Why is he so serious about guarding the SS deadweight? He's a strange lad, all right. He seems only to care about making it a happy hour in time. He makes me nervous. Why is that? I thought he was going to bite my head off once when I tried to look at the maps up on the bridge. It's top secret stuff, you know. What do you know about this watchman from the SS Deadweight? Oh, that foul comes in here every day straight from work. What time is that? He shows up here 19 minutes after the start of happy hour. Tell me about Russian Blue and her cronies. Her ship, the SS Deadweight, certainly makes some mysterious trips to sea. Oh, really, Bear? Oh, yes. In the dead of night. Very interesting. Now that's a frog suit. Ideal for any amphibious occasion. A frog suit like this might come in handy, especially considering the worldwide dairy crisis at hand. Interesting. This seems to be some sort of a high-tech alarm clock. This could be helpful. After all, they say timing is everything. That's it. That's the sound the sailor told me indicates the end of his shift. Didn't you hear the clock? What are you still doing here? I know. I heard it. I could leave now if only my replacement was here. Unless you're the chap. Um, yes. As a matter of fact, I am your replacement. Consider yourself replaced. How can you be my relief if you're not wearing a sailor hat? Right. What was I thinking? There's no telling when I might need one of these hats. You better give me 40 of them. 40? But I only have one left. All right, I'll take one of them. 
Good. I hope you and your little hat will be happy together. Have a good day. Okay, you can go now. Thank you. Out of my way. Coming through. When you've got to go, you've got to go. SS dead weight made an unscheduled stop out in the middle of the ocean. This particular spot could require some further investigation. Let's see. It looks like the SS dead weight went to 35 degrees latitude, 175 degrees longitude. Where did you last see this lucky charm? Maybe I can help you find it. Let's just say I lost it on a foolish fishing expedition. So, Captain Drydock, I just had an interesting little game of go fish with that Mr. Big Pig at the cantina. And you'll never guess what happened. He cheated and ending up winning your lucky charm. No, actually he lost and I won this. My lucky charm! You found it! Yes! Do you know what this means? I can go out on the sea again. The curse is lifted. Thank you. Thank you. Charmed, I'm sure. Listen, matey. If you ever need to use the SS Winner Prize, just let me know. I'll take you anywhere you need to go. You can't resist the call of the sea, can you? Even when it reverses the charge. Let me grab my map and you can show me where you'd like to go. I've always wanted to go here. Let's do it! I'll just keep the map here in case we need it later. Interesting. A pool of white water. I've never seen white water like this before. Wait a minute. It's milk. Dairy milk. And none too fresh, I might add. It sounds just like a seashell out here. I'll need to find the source of this milk. But I daren't just jump in the water with my tux on. It's strictly dry clean only. Now I'm a lean green swimming machine. Ah yes, the underwater splendor of the Mediterranean. That pipe must be where all the milk is coming from. What a terrible waste. I have to put a stop to this. I suppose worms have a bit of frogophobia. Oh well, a fishing line like this could come in handy. Ah, 
I'm on you. You're trespassing in private waters. You're mine, intruder. Guess again, Tim Tuna. Yes, these worms are definitely frogophobic. Here goes. It's the dreaded rear admiral, also known as spy maneuver number 41. the hook the big one that fisherman will have quite a fish story to tell I was going to make a joke about fishing but I couldn't think of a good line I should wait until the guard can't see me I hate to be the bearer of bad tidings, but I've run out of options. Excuse me? Oh, yes! What the? I learned that one at spy camp. Ah, those were the days. This steel door looks pretty thick, and I already used my laser toothbrush. I'll have to find another way. A box of old airplane fuses. I'd hate to refuse a find like this. The seat's missing. Maybe the pilot used it as a flotation device. Here's the jet's fuse panel, and there are some missing pieces. These spare fuses must fit into the panel, but where? I wonder if this fuse panel is familiar. This looks like the missile fire button. Now I can do some damage to that door. Something seems broken though. This trigger button isn't doing much good right now, but it's still fun to push.
This will teach them for not leaving a key under the doormat. I suppose that guided missile was misguided. Of course I planned that. I love a dramatic pause before blowing up giant steel doors leading to secret fortresses. I think I've discovered the entrance to William the Kid's secret fortress. Spy Fox to Mobile Command Center. Please stand by. Hello, monkey. What's up? Spy Fox, I've told you once, I've told you a million times. It's Monkey Penny. Sorry, what do you want? I'm busy saving the world right now. Our informant, Marta Harry, has some important information for you. Where can I find Marta Harry? I'm not sure. All she said is that she's underwater and you'll treasure her disguise. Okay, I'll check it out. Spy Fox out. The boat will sink at midnight. It looks like it already sunk to me. That's not the correct code phrase. I know, but it's the truth. Agent Fox, it's good to be working with you again. Marta Harry, what a fortunate surprise. What invaluable information nugget do you have for me? I intercepted this nectar of the goat thing. But I don't know what it is. It looks like it fits into some larger component. Can you use it? Are you kidding? I'll treasure this. Well, I got to go. Good fishing, Agent Fox. Thanks for always sticking your neck out for me, Marta. You're a gem. Welcome to William the Kid's Secret Volcano Fortress. Please insert the electronic code box and answer today's passcode phrase. Hmm. The spy wanted to counter the remark with intelligence? That is not a correct response. Have a good day. Answering that code phrase looks like it might end up being punishing. It looks like the electronic code box plugs into the panel of this voice-activated security system. Welcome to William the Kid's Secret Volcano Fortress. The tree specialist was startled by the dogwood's bark. That is not a correct response. Hmm, I don't have the correct date. I need to know today's date. It's not quite as easy as it sounds, considering all the time zones I fly through. The carpet layer tactfully finished his job. That is not a correct response. The college student professed a desire to teach. That is not a correct response. The groundskeeper gave the wet lawn its due consideration. This is correct. You may now enter the fortress. Have an even better day. Thank you. What a polite voice box. I'd better let Monkey Penny know I made it inside Kid's secret fortress. Spy Fox to Mobile Command Center. Please stand by. Spy Fox, I'm glad you checked in. How's it going? Smooth. As smooth as sandpaper underpants. I've just got into Kid's secret fortress. Excellent. Now you've got to disarm that milky weapon of destruction. I'm in there like swimwear. 
Spy Fox out. Interesting. This looks like some sort of locker room for kids' evil minions. Yellow overalls. I'll bet this is the official Nectar of the Goats uniform. No one would recognize me in one of these. not only giving me the eye, it gave me the boot. Perhaps if I was wearing some kind of uniform, I could get by. Uh-oh, someone's coming. I'd better hide. So that's the dastardly William the Kid everyone so worked up about. Ms. Blue, take this piece of paper from the easel in my office. It has the location of the punch card written on it. You must destroy it. That punch card is the only thing that can disarm the milky weapon of destruction now. Right away, your imperial goatness. I've deposited the money in your bank account. Thanks for all your help. It's a pleasure doing business with you. Call me anytime. I need to get my hands on that punch card he mentioned. <coughs> Maybe I can use these conveyor belts to get up to that platform. <coughs> Ouch! This is going to be more difficult than it looks. This looks exactly like that diagram over in the locker room. Now I need to move these levers to the positions shown in the diagram. This must be some sort of tram to take people around in Kid's Fortress. It looks like a billboard. Hello, I'm from the accounting office. I was asked to count all the offices. I need to get into that room and make sure it's really an office. If you're from the accounting office, you know perfectly well that this is William the Kid's office. No one but the grand goat head himself is allowed in there. Oh, right, of course. How silly of me. That's the office that really counts. Sorry to bother you. I need to get into Kid's office and take a look around.
I've been itching to take these overalls off. I think whomever it belonged to had fleas. It's a secret passageway. What a clever secret entrance. William the Kid can go from the town square to his secret fortress any time he wants. I'd better leave this door unlocked in case I need to get back in here later. That's one of those spy traps. This uniform is a fashion nightmare. I should leave them the name of my tailor. There's one sound the ear can hear better than any other. The sound of falling money. I'll just spend a penny. Sorry, folks. I'm on a mission. You must be one dedicated accountant. Oh, this must be Kid's secret volcano office. I should take a look around. No, no, no. I'm not coming out. This must be the paper William the Kid mentioned. Now can I get the location of that punch card? I should leave this paper here. There could be a clue on it. not to snoop around kid's office. I'll come back here later. must be where William the Kid keeps his controls for the milky weapon of destruction. I should let Monkey Penny know I've made it here. Spy Fox to Mobile Command Center. Please, stand by. Spy Fox, 
Good to hear from you. What's new? I'm in William the Kid's control room. The launching panel for the Milky Weapon of Destruction is right here. Great. Now, all you have to do is find the missing punch card so you can disarm the Milky Weapon of Destruction. Right. That shouldn't be too difficult. Spy Fox out. Hot butter. There's Kid's giant milk carton. No need to keep this uniform on. The Blue Goat. This is quite a collection. Leave it to William the Kid to acquire some of the world's most significant forgeries. Then put them into frames that look like they were bought at a petrol station. This seems to be some sort of multicolored lock mechanism. Aha! A secret wall safe! What an original hiding place! I haven't given up on this yet. I'll be back. That's the cheese and safe cracker. This cheese and safe cracker kit should do the trick. This seems to be working. One more to go. I'm in! Sometimes I amaze even myself. Those must be the punch cards. Which one do I need? Maybe this is the punch card I need. I'd better close the safe. I don't want anyone to suspect that it has been tampered with. Usually, I wouldn't wear somebody else's clothes, but sometimes you have to walk on the wild side. Of course, I can't disarm the milky weapon of destruction until I put the punch card into this control panel. I hope this is the right punch card.
did the trick, once again, I've saved the world from a horrible, or in this case, smelly fate. Now, I need to go get that goat. Not so fast, my crafty friend. You may think you have outfoxed me by disarming my milky weapon of destruction. But I'm afraid it is too late to save your precious cows. It's over, Billy. Give yourself up. Don't ever call me Billy. It's William. And it is not over yet, my foxy nemesis. When I pull this lovely lever, the cow stables will become completely flooded with milk. And that will be the end of the dairy world as we know it! That's the most despicable thing I've ever seen! <laughs> this! is really rich. Kid, you're kidding yourself if you think I'm going to let you get away with this. It's too late. And now, if you'll excuse me, Mr. Fox, I have a flight to catch on my giant metallic getaway blimp, where I will implement my plan to take over the world, filling it with my delicious goat byproducts. Delicious? You must be insane. Insane, you say? You're the crazy one, if you think you can save the cows. Farewell, Mr. Fox. And good luck finding this secret passageway to the stables. <laughs> You'll need it! Ah! <laughs> Stupid door! Thanks for leaving a little clue, kid. Now all I have to do is find that scarf. Kid Scarf. This must be the secret passageway to the stables where Kid is holding the cows. I'd better hurry. That is one big chicken. Hello there, puny puppy-like creature. You're probably intimidated by my rippling muscles. Do you happen to know the ways of a cockadoodle-foo warrior? Cockadoodle-foo, you say? It sounds familiar. I can use this to gather information about cockadoodle-foo and that funky chicken. No need to keep this uniform on. Bea, do you know anything about cockadoodle foo? Well, I dabbled in a professional career as a cockadoodle foo fighter for a few years. Everything I learned came from a book. A book? Yeah, you can have it if you're interested. It's all too violent for me now. 
I've moved to a more spiritual phase of life. Thanks, Bea. You may have just saved the planet from this dairy drought. You're a superstar. That's not going to do me any good. Usually, I wouldn't wear somebody else's clothes, but sometimes you have to walk on the wild side. That enormous chicken is still here. All right, my little furball. Now try the cinnamon twist on for size. This cockadoodle fool book from Bayer should help me defeat that funky chicken. Okay, let me see. Cockadoodle Foo looks like a piece of cake. Now that I see the instruction manual, this fancy counter move should work on my overinflated opponent. All right, Doodle. I'm going to counter that with the triple Ventusla. What? What happened? Didn't think I could beat you, huh? Well, I'd stay and toy with you longer, but it looks like you're all tied up. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, how about two out of three falls? No, let's make it best of seven. You can't leave me like this. Cockatoodaloo. The kidnapped dairy cows. I've found them. Hang on, everyone. My name is Spy Fox, and I'll rescue you shortly. Continue treading milk, and I'll be right there. I hereby declare you free-range cows. You think you've won, Spy Fox, but you're wrong. Go ahead, free the cows this time, but I'll be back to milk the world yet again. <laughs> Not so fast, kid. The last thing the world needs is another escaped goat. I'll chase after William the Kid next time and put him where he belongs. Jail. Later that day. For outstanding heroism and suaveness, I award you, Spy Fox, the Little Daddy Clowning Street Cookie of Justice. Why, thank you, Prime Minister. If only I could have brought that dastardly William the Kid to justice. I'm confident that you'll nab that villain next time. Three cheers for Spy Fox. I've got my cookie. Has anyone got any milk?
can't stop me now. Stop me now! <laughs>